If you're interested in science, mental health, or even your diet, you've probably heard of the human microbiome. The concept has become hugely popular since the turn of the century, with improved DNA sequencing technology and shifting interests from pathogenic bad bacteria to the millions of symbiotic good bacteria inhabiting our bodies. An individual's microbiome is simply the collective genomic material of the human microbiota. Everyone's microbiome is unique with different populations of microbes inhabiting various niches of the body, often to achieve the same metabolic effect. Much like a barren island, every microbiome starts off empty and is colonized over time, changing in composition and maturity. The human gut is a center for microbial activity. Here, microbiota composition can be affected by several human-induced lifestyle factors. It turns out that gut microbiota can affect the body too a concept shown by recent research into the gut-brain axis, or GBA. The GBA describes the intricate, bidirectional highway of interaction between the central nervous system and our gut microbiota. This fascinating relationship has implications for many illnesses. But what about mood and brain-related dysfunctions, such as stress and anxiety? Stress is a complex dynamic response involving a series of interconnected regions of the brain. Stress disrupts homeostasis and most organisms have a defensive response to re-establish homeostatic balance once the stressor is removed. This is conducted by the neuroendocrine hypothalamic pituitary adrenal HPA axis, which releases behaviour altering chemicals. The influence of stress on the bidirectional gut-brain axis is not fully understood. However, its impacts have been observed and mechanisms of communication along the gut-brain axis have been proposed. Studies have identified important stress-induced changes in the community structure of microbiota. A study examining stress in early life of rodents found the microbiota of stressed rats to be significantly different to non-stressed rats. An increase in colonic motility was also observed in the stressed rats. It was found that extended and recurrent stress can have lasting effects on microbiota, however occasional stress only results in transient change. Another study arrived at the same conclusion and suggested that this change in the community structure results in an increased susceptibility to enteric pathogens. It was also found that the change developed over several days following the stressor and was not immediately observed. In this study, two families of bacteria were identified to have decreased in relative abundance in the stressed mice. It was suggested that this decrease caused overgrowth of other anaerobically cultured bacterial species and resulted in a decline in microbial richness. Evidence from studies on the gut-brain axis using antibiotic treatment, probiotics and germ-free mouse models indicates that development and changes in the gut microbiome have the ability to influence stress response and increase or reduce stress-related behaviours. The influence of gut microbiota on stress response was first demonstrated in the study by Suda et al. through comparison of HPA response to stress between germ-free mice and specific pathogen-free mice. Results showed that the HPA response to mild restraint stress was more sensitive in the germ-free mice than it was in the specific pathogen-free mice, suggesting that the microbiome is involved in the regulation and appropriate development and functioning of the body's stress responses. Another study conducted by Bursic et al. investigated the effects of the microbiome on behaviour in innately anxious and stress-sensitive mice when antibiotics are ingested. Results indicated that there was no change in behaviour when the antibiotic was given to the germ-free mice. However, these mice were then colonised with microbiota and a drastic increase in anxious and stress-related behaviour was observed. This outcome supports the notion that changes in the microbiome community have the ability to increase and generally alter stress-related behaviour. The exact function of gut microbiota in the pathways of communication along the gut-brain axis remains to be fully understood, which is predominantly due to the lack of knowledge in the roles and types of gut microbes. Broadly speaking, there is a number of mechanisms by which they communicate. Afferent and efferent neural pathways, bidirectional neuroendocrine signaling, immune activation and signaling from gut to brain, altered intestinal permeability, enteroendocrine signaling and bacterial metabolites directly targeting the enteric nervous system. So let's focus on enteroendocrine signaling. 
Enterocendocrine cells are cells within the mucosal layer of the gastrointestinal tract which act to secrete hormones. It has recently been proposed that bacterial metabolic byproducts stimulate the secretion of various neuropeptides which then presumably diffuse through surrounding connective tissue. Here, they affect the gut-brain access through either the enteric nervous system or other afferent pathways such as the vagal sensory nerves. For example, the active peptide galanin is secreted to stimulate the release of cortisol and neuroepinephrine by directly acting on the adrenal glands or causing glucocortical release from the adrenal glands through acting on the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis, all outcomes being linked to a stress response. At the moment, what we know about the human microbiome is kind of like what most people know about the computer. We know that it works, but we don't quite know how. With this being said, the Integrative Human Microbiome Project aims to help link our observations of the gut-brain axis with proposed mechanisms by improving our ability to collect and analyse human microbiome data.